With all the options that are available today, people often ask me what road should they take in order to learn how to code and make games. Should they join college? Should they attend a bootcamp? Or should they learn on their own by following online tutorials and courses? And given the fact that I am a guy who went through all three stages, so I went to college, I joined the bootcamp, and also I learned on my own, so I'm self-taught, I'm going to give you my perspective from my own experience, my own opinion. So it's not like a golden rule what you should do. And I'm not responsible. I'm going to put a disclaimer here. Okay, disclaimer that I'm not responsible what you do with your life. So I'm just giving you my own opinion and you can see what you can expect in every three of these stages or in every three roads that you wish to take from one of these. So I'm going to start with college, but by the way, fire here for awesometudes.com in case you guys don't know that. So anyways, I'm going to start with college and I joined college. I don't know which year it was. I believe 2014. I'm a dropout by the way. So I dropped out of college. Basically, I went to college like a month, a little more than a month and I dropped out. And uh, you guys are going to say like, but how do you know? How can you tell what is on college when you dropped out after one month? Well, I saw the curriculum. I met the instructors there or the professors. I have a lot of friends who are now in college and who went through college. And I exchanged opinions with them. They told me how it went on their college son and so forth. So that's how I can give you my opinion and my perspective on that. But in my college, everything was in English because I am not a native English person. In case you didn't know, plot twist. Anyways, as I said, everything was in English, which is good because I find it hard to learn programming in any other language other than English because that's a science that was developed in using the English language. So if you try to learn any other language, you will have difficulties and issues. That's my own personal opinion. Anyways, I saw the curriculum or the, in the first month that I went, we had or we did databases and we had the objective to learn what are classes, functions, objects and variables. And that was for the first semester. Now, one semester is about three months, let's say four-ish, four months. And that is the number one issue that I have with colleges, they are bound by law. What does that mean? That means you get a curriculum and you need to finish that curriculum in the given semester. In this case, my first semester. So that is the curriculum. For example, you can learn variables, functions, classes, and objects on YouTube in a tutorial that lasts for one hour. You can get to know the concept, then you can practice. And let's say it will take you two weeks to figure out how everything works if you practice every single day. Okay, so you only take two weeks to learn that specific thing, but you need to stick through the whole semester. Like you have another three and a half months you, that you need to sit there, attend on the class. If you don't attend the class, you will not be able to go out and do the exam and you will fail even though you learned. And that's basically what I don't like or one of the things that I don't like about college is that no matter how smart you are, no matter if you know the subject or not, you need to go through it for that given period of time that the college or the people who put together the curriculum have set for you. And as I said, a lot of time you waste because of that, because as I already said, you learn that concept in like on YouTube in two hours and then on college, it takes you like the full semester. So that's a lot of time wasted just for nothing. So that's the number one issue. The second issue is the exams themselves. I don't think that the exam can tell you how much you learn because there are only questions like, oh, circle this question or check the checkbox. And I don't think that's the proper way to, you know, grade somebody to grade a student because I was a student who did not get any good grades. You know, most of my life, I was like the average student in quotes of society, like average from one to five, I would usually get two or three. But when I compare myself, and this is not to brag, but just to give the facts, when I compare myself to other people who got straight A's, all fives, all tens on college for the same subject that is programming, they don't know how to program. I have, I have a lot of people that I know who are, who have the math, who have a master's degree, even doctor, PhD degree in computer science. They don't know how to program and look at me. I don't have a degree, but I know how to program. So that is the number one issue. And at the end of the day, a lot of, I'm not going to say every single one, I'm not going to say every single one, but a lot of the college professors who lecture on these universities, on colleges and how we want to call them, 
they are, as Robert Kiyosaki said, they are fake teachers. What does that mean? They don't practice what they teach. I know a lot of professors, I know them personally, like a lot of teachers, instructors, however you call them, they teach others how to code, but they themselves don't know how to code. How can you learn from a person like that? When you ask him a question, he doesn't know anything. He cannot help you, cannot answer your question, just follows the curriculum, which doesn't change every single year. Like in 100 years from today, they will be learning Cobalt or whatever they learn, I don't know. So there you go, that's the number one issue, or number three, I said number one, but that's that the third issue I have with colleges. And at the end of the day, even though you go to college, you are going to end up being self-taught because you will be confused in college. Again, this is my own perspective. You'll be confused. You will not learn anything because the people over there, the teachers will not teach you anything over there. And uh, yeah, then you will come back to your home and you will try to learn on your own. So at the end of the day, you will be self-taught. So, okay, that's my opinion about college. When it comes to boot camps, and not to mention, depending on where you are, if you live in the US, I don't live luckily for me, but colleges cost like, I don't know, man, your life, they cost you your life, okay? So it, it, where I live, it's like, I don't know, about $2,000, maybe maybe $1,500 per year to attend college, that's per year. And in US, I don't know, it's 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, depending on the college. So it can be a lot expensive to also go to college. So moving forward now, boot camps. What is the difference between boot camps and colleges? Well, boot camps for me, in my opinion, because I went through one, I attended it online. I'm not gonna lie, I attended it online. I didn't went through it in person, even though there was an option, but it's another city. It's like 300 kilometers away from me. I would have to live over there, which is not something I wanted to do because that boot camp was for one year. So it was for one year, but I attended it online. And basically I asked, Everything that I learned online or the curriculum that they gave me online is the same curriculum they taught in person. So even if I attend it, I would learn the same exact thing, except there will be professors, instructors, I want to call them, who would explain, in quotes, who would explain those concepts before they would, I don't know, before I go home and try to learn them on my own again. So you see where this is going. I'm not gonna say every bootcamp is bad. There are good bootcamps depending on their organization and how the professors or instructors over there are willing to help you and how well they are in that field. I believe that bootcamp professors and instructors are more skilled than the ones on college. Again, this is not a general rule. I'm just talking from my own personal experience because people who work in bootcamps are usually people who work in companies. That's their side hustle. Like, okay, what can I do to earn a few more bucks? There's a local bootcamp that can hire me. I'm gonna instruct people, yada, yada, yada. You get the point. So the people were knowledgeable, but again, they were buying by the syllabus or the curriculum so they needed to follow it and to be honest I attended the boot camp in my own language it was not English and it was awful it was awful I cannot tell you how much awful it was just the translation from certain programming concepts like threads and strings and whatnot just the translation gave me headaches and I had to learn them with using examples they used in my own language. So I I hated it. And basically I didn't learn anything, even though I paid around $2,000 for that year. That's like the price of the bootcamp over here where I live. And I'm gonna tell you guys where I live, okay? So, but in USA, it's probably 20K, 30K, depending on the bootcamp, 15K maybe, but still bootcamps are like a couple of thousand dollars. So I paid 2000 and literally I was bound by the contract. So I had to pay them off but I quit that bootcamp like after two months because again, I reverted back at the end of the day, I went back and learned on my own because I didn't find the explanations very well. They were confusing, especially as I said, they were used in my own language. The instructors were not that helpful because they don't care. They are paid the sum they are paid. For example, I don't know, let's say their salary is $1,000. Even if he tries more like to help other students, to help people learn and, and understand the topics that are hard for them. He will not get a raise or he will not get some bonus. So he has those $1,000 and that's all there is that he has. So he's not gonna like put some extra work to help you. And again, as I said, 
the only good thing that came out of that bootcamp is that I got certified as an Android developer because I passed all those exams after I learned how to do that on my own. So I learned Java, I learned how to create Android apps. Then I went and took all the tests at the end of the year because you're not, you know, I, I was online. You know, so I took the online option. I was not, you know, uh, is, I was not obligated to attend live. So I, at the end, I could just, you know, come and take those exams and, you know, test my knowledge. So I passed that and I was certified. I became a certified Android developer, which I'm not that proud of because, you know, I accomplished that on my own at the end of the day. I just, you know, gave the money for no reason. So that is my opinion about boot camps. And which brings me to the third option, which, you know, at the end of the first and the second option, I took the third option anyways, which is self-taught. So as I said, when I joined college, I already learned how to code and make games. So it was very, it was funny to me to see all the things that I was supposed to learn and how difficult they were explained. And even today, I have a lot of friends who are like second year of college, third year, even fourth year of college. And they come to me so that I can solve the problems they have in their classes. And they're like, man, we didn't even see a computer until year two. You're attending... A, computer science college where you are supposed to learn about programming and how to program and in the first in the whole first year you don't even see a computer i mean why why what why why so i'm glad that i took the route of being self-taught and i know a lot of you guys are going to say but okay how can i get a job if i'm self-taught uh what again in order to get a job especially in a company, because you guys need to know one thing. A company will hire you because of your skills. If you have 30,000 diplomas, college degrees, whatever, if you cannot make money for that company, if the assignment they give you, you cannot, you, you cannot do it. You don't know how to create that app. You don't know how to fix their website. They will fire you right on the spot. But on the other hand, if you know how to fix all those things, if you can contribute to their team, if you can contribute to their product, if you don't have a day of school, but you know how to do that, they will hire you, period. Anybody can say whatever he wants, but period, that's all there is to it. And in order to get hired, of course, you need to show off something. That's why I advise you, if you take the self-taught route, that you have projects to show. You need to have a portfolio and you will build that while you are learning. So that's how you will get hired because people come. And I had this question, like, people come like, oh, I finished college, okay, but you have another guy who has like 10 projects to show and the guy from college doesn't even know how to do one of those projects. Who do you think will be hired? And I had those issues, you know, I had people come to me because I hired people for my business and people are like, okay, I have a college degree, but do you know how to do, do you know how to create a program? He's like, well, I need practice. Okay, but what did you do for four years on college? You didn't learn that. So my advice, my advice is if you, I'm not going to tell you go to college, don't go to college, attend the bootcamp, not attend the bootcamp. I'm not going to do that. That's on you. But I'm going to tell you this. If you go to college, try to learn as much as possible on your own off college, research, follow YouTube tutorials, enroll in online courses, you know, practice a lot, do the same thing if you, even if you enroll in the bootcamp. If you take the third option, you will have to learn on your own anyways, you will do these things, that's why I didn't mention it, but don't rely only on the knowledge that you will learn in college or on boot caps. Again, this is from my own personal experience. This is what happened to me. And at the end, as I said, I learned everything on my own and it turned out to be great. I have a nice business. I can sustain myself. I live alone. I bought myself a car and I cannot complain, which, and if I finished college, the, given the circumstances where I live in my city, particularly, I don't, I don't see anywhere where I could apply for a job except to be a teacher in high school or in college. And this is not something that I'm interested in because I don't want to be bound by the syllabus or the curriculum and only do the same one and the same thing over and over again for 50 years until I retire. There are no companies that require a programmer. There are no companies that require a game developer. So I would have to go abroad, you know, or in the capital of my, my country or probably somewhere in Europe or whatever, because I live in Europe. But yeah, there you go. So I don't regret, you know, I don't regret uh, not finishing college, even though a lot of people told me like, go to college. No, man, no, I, 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 I spend my time more wisely. But again, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you don't go to college, don't do this. 
I gave you an overall view. What can you expect on college and boot caps and so on and so forth? And I told you my story in short. Anyways, fire here from awesomedudes.com. If you want to learn how to code and make games on your own, of course, click the link below my Ultimate Game Development Academy. You have a discount because you're watching this video. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care.